Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا Don't come near adultery, fornication. It is, it is a foul act. Allah calls it fahisha, as in a foul, dirty act. Wasa'a sabila. Its pathway will only lead to harm. I'm going to take that pathway. It'll lead you to a bad end. It has no pathway of a good end. No good pathway. You have to come back. It's like when you're on the freeway and you lose your exit. You keep going. You keep going. What, where are you going? You're going to end up further and further away. It's a lost end. You've got to turn back and take the correct exit. Similarly, don't come even near zina. Now let's analyze it for a minute. Zina, adultery, fornication. It can be done while a person is married or when a person is single. The punishment for when you are married is worse than the punishment when you are single. But they are both major sins. They are both terrible punishments in this world and also in the hereafter. If they repent in this world, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. But if they don't repent from it and they die on that sin, then Allahu Akbar, the punishments are horrendous. This is a warning from Allah in order to guard our chastity, guard our morals, guard our family, guard our society, our community. Islam is a holistic approach. If a Muslim fits within this system for the others, giving, looking after the society, the community, the young and the old, everybody. We, on the other hand, live in a society, a secular society in which it's the individual. Everything's about the individual. Myself, you can see the effect of it. Selfishness is beyond measure, beyond measure. Some people assume don't come near adultery means you can go out, you can fondle, you can spend some time, you can do all that stuff, but just don't do the act of intercourse. This is what they think. They think that Allah said, don't do that. If you analyze the verse, Allah did not say, do not commit zina. He said, don't come close to zina. There's a difference between doing and coming close to it. So sometimes when they have something dangerous, they put fences and the fences are well away from the danger area. And then they put signs. And then if it's still dangerous, they block off the streets and there's no streets near it. And the closer you get, the more danger it is. So don't come close to it. Allah is telling us, don't come close to zina. A look is coming close. A touch is coming close. Uh, a sweet word in the haram in seclusion is coming close. A number, a, a kiss, a all of these things are coming close. Allah says, Allah says zina. 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 Because once you come close to it, you're on, a, on that pathway. And that pathway, if you keep going on it, your temptations and your desires are going to continue to hassle you, going to continue to you know, provoke you, they're going to continue to urge you. Why does, a Muslim, why does a human being find it hard to stop? Why do you keep going? Why is it that it doesn't work for us when we say, it's okay, I'll only go this far. I'm not going to go very far. I'm not going to go too deep. And then suddenly you find yourself deeper than what you thought in the problem. Why? Why does this happen to the human? It is the nature of the psychology of the human being, which Allah has created and He knows it best. And for this reason, He said, لا تقربوا, don't come close.